for my people who are in the chat, if you are an aspiring sock analyst and you want to be a sock analyst and you want to come on and answer a question and you give a favorable answer, I will work some out with you where I give you a free call. So I'm going to pull up these questions and uh, whoever wants to come up, let me put the link back to join the call for the stream. This video is being sponsored by Textual Consulting. Are you still struggling to get into cybersecurity? Are you not getting interviews? Do you have a bad resume? Or is it all the above? Well, if that's you, then we got you covered at Textual Consulting. My name is Henri Davis. I'm a career coach and a cybersecurity professional, and I've helped hundreds, maybe even thousands of people get into cybersecurity with my coaching and my content that you've seen in various places. Now, I specialize in specifically getting people in the blue team. That would be incident response or SOC analysts. I can cover everything from your entry level to your medium to your advanced skills and really help you outperform your resume. You don't believe me? Check out some of these testimonials that I've had from recent clients. If you're interested, click the link in my bio, textualconsulting.com forward slash offerings to see what offerings that we have available for you. Now, back to the show. Swagstar, can you hear us? Oh, yeah, I can hear y'all. Okay, cool, man. Cool, man. Thank you for coming up here. This is so, it's two things. I promise I'm not going to be like Simon Cowell up here on you. Trust me. And two, it's also another way to show people like if they ever want to do a call, how it would even go. And other people on the panel are actually are actually free to put their input in on if they want to help as well. So, this is a, a simple question. So, it's how you would triage or analyze an unusual authentication alert in an, an environment. And I got analyze in parentheses because typically, if you're working a SOC, it's in response. The word you're going to hear most of the time is triage. You simply you hear that same word when you go to the hospital, some triage nurse or whatever. It's just pretty much investigation. So, and to help you out some, the word unusual here is used specifically to throw you off, but don't look too much into unusual or you need to figure out how you can prove something is actually unusual. Okay. So if I had an alert pop up that said, let's just say for instance, it said it was from a unusual location, not necessarily an unusual location, but uh, maybe geographically it'd be a, a different location from where it's supposed to be. That would throw a red flag to me. If it was at a time that was outside of office hours, that would throw a red flag to me. So then I would escalate that up if it was me in that position, which I've never worked in that position. I'm trying to get there. So bear with me. Okay. So you was on the right track. But and for in this instance, for an interview like this, they wouldn't be wanting you to say escalate it just yet because you have to prove why you're escalating it. So... I okay, want you to so go back to two of the you, things you first said when you said like geographic or you said outside of like office hours or whatever. How could you verify that the time that they logged in is different than what they typically do? Uh, I can check out the IP. I can check the activity log for that particular user that is, uh, for instance, for their workstation. If you're saying that it's using this workstation and it's not the correct IP address. Uh, I can verify it with that. Um, login credentials say that it's somebody in Dallas when normally they work in Florida. That would be a red flag. But all of a sudden for them to be in uh, Dallas, if they're not on a business trip or nothing like that, uh, especially like maybe if it was 6.30, let's say 6.30 a.m., they clocked out, and then all of a sudden at 7, they're in Dallas. When normally they're in Florida, they would throw up a red flag. So you're saying if you saw two two authentication alerts at the same time? Well, the, you know, less than a reasonable amount of time. Let's say uh, 30 minutes. You can't commute from Florida in this location when you just logged off. 
and that's where you normally log off. And then all of a sudden you're in Dallas 30 minutes later. Okay. That will raise suspicion. Typically, most of the time it may be a region that may be a little further away from uh, like a, a state or something. Okay, so let me try to prime you to answer this. How could you verify that person is the person that logged in? Uh, does this particular company have MFA actively already? Yeah. And so what would you want to check if they what? Uh, if they can prove who they were, if they mm-hmm. if they phone was uh, if they got the alert to their phone and they they click. Yes, it's me or put in number like with Microsoft, you put in the number or however the different MFAs work. Yeah, I mean, you're you on the path. So then also, like you said, you could even go into, okay, let me see if this is the phone that they got on file for him that he typically logs on from. Yeah, that would be that. Yeah, go back to the IP. If the IP don't match up with their work, well, whatever, you know, laptop we issued them, if that's not the normal one or the one to use at home, then, yeah, that would throw up a red flag. And they're now using MFA. Well, don't fix that too much on the host because um, a lot of times these – authentication alerts may not even be on a, a endpoint because not because a attacker would have to which is rare but had to do something to the person that got them at gunpoint where they logging on their machine that's um, true too that's true i didn't even think about it like that but yeah think of so another way that you could verify like, cause I know you threw out dallas and florida what's another way that sometimes and you probably don't know this but it could say that you're in Florida, but that does, that's not really an issue. Like, what are, okay, I'll give you a, a hint. What are things that we use at a company to keep the employees safe while they're on the company network? I was just going to say the VPN can throw that off too. There you go. So could you possibly check if they actually was uh, logged onto the VPN that day? Oh, for sure. Yeah, you can check. Uh, like, I know a, a lot of companies use a VIA. Uh, or coming so you can check and see if they logged in with that yeah so those are like some easy ways you can check like i said if you're looking at the ips uh, like yeah it could say florida but if it still says like you're saying akama but it could say like uh zscaler and then you see like uh you know octopush or whatever it went through uh nine times out of ten they probably traveling or uh it could just be whatever region they're close enough to that uh that proxy service which is uh, connect to that server and then say you're there so like a lot of times when i log on the vpn it's showing a city that i'm nowhere nearby but i'm on the vpn um so cool we kind of went through ways that you can kind of verify that it's not unusual now let's say you checked all that stuff and you found out it actually is unusual outside of saying you're going to escalate it, what what would you do if you found out there was an intruder in the network? Uh, Segment. So I would uh, try to cut them off from the rest of the network. Uh, Actually lock, lock down, try to remote into it and lock down the workstation if possible. And basically it goes back to segmentation. You have to be able to lock off this door behind them and keep them from going any further into the network. So they're only exposed to what they have directly around them. So you're on the right track. Um, But if you only fixate on the endpoint, couldn't they do other stuff in the environment? Uh, Yeah. I mean, I guess you could lock down every... Lock down their, uh, revoke their accesses, their uh, least okay. privileges. So you can revoke their access. You can lock their account. Uh, what about you did all that, but yet they still were logged in in some other places? How would you uh, effectively uh, mitigate that? Delete the account? Suspend? No, you can't delete it. <laughs> okay. can't, delete it. <laughs> you can't delete no accounts, man. You got to keep those accounts uh, around. Okay, okay. Uh, you got me stumped. Mind you, this like 
uh, I'm, I'm like two months in. So, yeah, right. help me out. <laughs> Listen, man, when I do these questions, I'm not expecting people to like, you know, answer these on like a tier three level. I already know based on like how some of the first things someone says kind of where their level will be. But well, that's typically just an exercise I do with people. They say they want to be in the sock because I give them an alert that they would nine times out of see in the sock and then they start helping them figure out how the thought process needs to be when it comes to working in the sock. So the other thing you got to do is clear out all the sessions because they can still be logged in other places and you want to make sure that they don't extra trade any data. So clear those sessions out and of course, um, reset the password. So yeah, see, so Sabino just said it forced the sessions out. So clearing those sessions out. And then that's when the other investigation gonna be, you're gonna figure out, okay, how would they compromise? What happened? Uh, was anybody else compromised? Did we see any data X field? Like that's when you start getting into the other part of that. The part, the main part you were doing really just the responding. So you can stop the bleeding. So we don't got a widespread breach on our hands where we got lateral movement and they go into different people's um, accounts and stuff. So but you did good, man. Um, I think you're in a private chat. Let me go in a private chat real quick, and I'm going to uh, uh, put this email in here so you can uh, email me. That way we can set some up, man. You was a good sport, and uh, I'll definitely uh, set some up so we can talk in the, the near future. Oh, for sure. I didn't I didn't talk to you on LinkedIn before uh, from a little town called Monroe, so you know I had to be watching. Okay, bet either so either um hit me up in this uh I put my like my other email in here so either just tell me who you is through the email or just hit me up on LinkedIn and uh, I'll remember and then I'll, I'll shoot you a link to where we can uh we could talk about some other stuff. Bet, bet. appreciate y'all for with everything y'all do because hey spreading this good gospel is what everybody needs because man we just didn't know how wide and vast it is and how easy it was to get in or is to get in. You just got to have people to tell you the direction to go and guide you. So I appreciate it. No, nah, man, for sure, man. I got a, I got another live that's going to come up one day where me and some of like my director and manager friends, we're going to react to like a lot of the answers people have given for those and then try to put people like on, on game with those questions. 